Brett, what's the first thing we're gonna do when we fire up the iPad? Make sure you download the right app. Okay, that's a great start. And then go to your settings page to look for the Wi-Fi signal. And if you go to the Wi-Fi and go look at that and see what network's available. So if you can see, you've got the gateway network available and it's going to look that way until we configure that gateway and change it into an IIS blockage. And that's what it'll say when we're done, is IIS blockage. So we'll grab another iPad and get this set up. So this is what it should look like when it's configuring the gateway. So you see here, it says gateway, and when we're done, it's, gonna, it's going to disconnect from it. And actually, we're gonna be looking for IIS blockages, the Wi-Fi network that we're gonna be looking for. There you go. Okay, the first, screen, the first thing we're gonna see is setup. And so in other words, this thing hasn't been set up yet, and we're gonna go ahead and do that. Setup. And we're gonna, and it gives you two choices on how you wanna visually see the rows when you're done. And in this case, we're gonna go to the manifold view. And hit the yeah, forward button. Okay, so it should pick up automatically how many ECUs that you're running and in this case it did it we have eight ECUs and it, it says that it's asking us if we're setting up eight. Go ahead. Okay so we're it's also now asking us how many um, products are we monitoring. So in other words are we putting two different things down two different setups and in this case we're, we're running an 1860 drill even though they've got the rear and the front tower separated i would say we're going to go with one product this time okay okay so if we were diligent on how we set up our ecus they should show up here in order and then we can assign it to each tower in order. And in this, we're, we're gonna be looking at number one, in case this is, it's named 01. We can go in there and change that name if we want to, but but it, just bear in mind that it will reorder them if you do it, if you um, try to do alphabetical. So numbers first, letters second. So what Brett has done is actually numbered all the boxes um, before he put them on with the ECU numbers on them. So he's got a picture of that right here, and he's referring back to that that uh, picture to verify that he has the same ECUs in order as what he has on his iPad. So you got N4EI, right? Yep. So that's number one. So he's going to select that as the his name is 01, it's gonna be for tower one, which starts on the left front of the drill. And and he's going to set how many uh, runs are on that tower, right? How many sensors are going to that? Okay, you can hit the, right, yeah. there you go. So now we're on tower two, which on here, it's gonna go from, from the left to right. And on the front, it's gonna be on the front towers, it's gonna to be one, two, three, four, and on the back is going to be five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so he's already set up number two, and it, it has how many? It's got eight. So that's one thing. It'll it'll keep repeating the last one that you had for um, sensors, so you got to make sure you know how many sensors are going to each tower. So this is what that screen's gonna look like after he has each one of those ECUs um, set to the tower. And it has the last four of the, uh, the serial number assigned to each one of those. And that's what I was saying is, is when you set them up, you put them in order, uh, numerical alpha order. So in other words, numbers first, letters second uh, in, in order. So now we're in the port configuration screen. The only time you have to do anything with this screen is actually if you have sensors going to ports that are out of order. So in other words, you have a dead port, you need to put it in someplace else, you can change that. If you go into number one there, 
it's going to show we have nine sensors active on that ECU and they're assigned one through nine and you should have them plugged in that way on the back of the ECU and you can turn those on and off by tapping on the, the green uh, little switch there. You would turn off number nine for me. So let's say we don't want, we decided number nine uh, run on this tower, we weren't going to run for some reason. We could shut it off and it won't pick that one up. Um, you can turn that one back on. So if we needed to reassign nine, so let's say we put nine into port 11. Drag it, we can put it up there and it's still going to be show up as number nine on the tower and actually but it's actually in port 11 and we would have to make sure that the sensor was plugged into that port okay put that back we don't need to go into all of them to see that it's all going to show the same thing depending on how many ports he had set up so now we're going to get to how the work switch is set up and it's going to ask if we're running um, operating with section control which we are not and then it's going to ask which ECU has the switch attached to it in this case. And, and when we set these up, we always go to ECU number one. Um, you don't have to do that. You just have to figure out uh, which one it is and make sure you assign it. And so Brett picked that ECU that it was assigned to. And then it's going to ask you what mode the implement is currently in. So if we had the, the whisker switch that we installed on the back and it's going to be in whatever position that it's in so in this case we're running the drill is actually running is actually running in the up position uh, at the moment so you want it to say raised here so the switch is saying the same thing that what the condition of the drill is in so go ahead and hit that okay this is going to set up your alarms and your notifications so it's this is an alarm delayed factory um, default is 15 seconds you can swipe on that alarm delay and change that you can change it up and down depending on how um, quickly you want the system to react and warn you um, like i say factory is 15 seconds and then you can change that volume up and down as you wish to so now so we, we are technically configured. It's gonna show red and orange on all of those ports uh, or all those towers. So it, it's essentially saying that we don't have any product flowing to pass those sensors. And that's what it's looking for. It's looking for um, a product to be bouncing off the sensors and sending a sound signal to the ECU. And now we, we are seeing that it's all in red, meaning that we have no flow coming through those sensors. And, and it shows 100% variation to tower to tower. So in other words, this thing, there's just, it isn't running. Um, one thing to note is if you should, if you point out uh, the work switch um, icon up there, here, Brett. So now that's the work switch icon. And that would be green if it was in the dirt. Um, and, or the switch was showing that it was down. And then at that point, it would start that 15 second delay or timer and would start to uh, alarm at you. Where it says A and 0.0, .0 that's actually showing your flow number, um, your total flow number coming across. And in other words, it's not flowing anything right now, so it's at zero. And if we were running two products, it would show A and then another one would be showing B. A couple other things to note here is that we have um, the settings button right down uh, on there. And that's looking at the configuration or settings configurations, right? So it's going to show you on uh, your product A, your product B, um, what type of flow rate you're going to have coming through those things and whether or not it's going to be normal, low or very low. We have found that like, you know, some customers, if they're running a uh, very light scene, in other words, five pounds an acre and that sort of thing, we're running at very low, a few other things like that. So um, actually there's a, and on the mass flow alarm, uh, thresholds you can set that once you're more comfortable with how much product you've got coming in what you know is normal coming down your through for product and, and uh, you can tighten up the thresholds the upper and the upper and lower limits so you know if you've got too much or not enough product flowing 
uh, and then also you can change that alarm delay yet again, uh, your volume on that, and then also the work switch, um, which it's assigned to, you can change that here. Brett, if you would say, so the work switch inverted, you can hit that switch and you can tell it that it's probably in the dirt. And now if we go back to the blockage screen, that should turn green. So now we inverted it, it's green, it thinks it's running and it thinks it's in the dirt. And we should get an alarm here in about 15 seconds and start beeping at us. Okay, got an alarm. So the system is saying that it's, it's not running any product, something is blocked, something is wrong. And we can tap on the screen, the screen to uh, cancel it, but it will start alarming again in another 15 seconds. So let's go back to our um, settings screen and we'll we'll set turn that switch back so we put it back to the position that it was in for being raised essentially that's the, the bulk of it if you hit that little book icon there you can see that there's the operator's guide the installation guide the zone blockage um, guide troubleshooting guide quick reference guide and uh, channel configuration so it will really if you have any questions you can go through those guides and it'll walk you through all those different uh, things that you have to look at. We are um, configured, we're set up, and we're ready to hit the field with it.